Hello and welcome to the program. This is your business morning with me, Boson of Mofaye. Uh, it's uh, the beginning of a brand new business day and a new week, but this is what our business briefing looks like this morning. The cloud of the former Chief uh, Justice of Nigeria, Onohen's corruption, suspension and replacement is hanging over investors in the market week on Broad Street starting today and may upset last week's rally that we saw in equities and the debt market. Uh, of course, again, the Business Week is starting today with a bit of a busy calendar. Uh, Deloitte Nigeria Economic Outlook Conference with the Minister of Finance, the head of the budget, uh, the head of the FRS, and others will be in Lagos on Thursday. That's a very big uh, annual event from Deloitte Nigeria. And that's a big story. Meantime, uh, the corruption case involving the former, a former House of Reps member Farouk Lawan against uh, Femi Otedala over alleged $620,000 continues today at an Abuja court. A billionaire businessman Femi Otedala testifying as prosecution witness last November told the court that he alerted former president Goodluck Jonathan to the full subsidy scam in the year 2010 when he was later blackmailed by the then House of Reps committee led by Farouk Lawan. Mr. Femi Otedala uh, says he is expected today at the Abuja court to continue his testimony in the case against the former House uh, member, Farouk Lawan. Uh, meantime, a very busy week also at the debt market as the debt management office uh, this week offers 150 billion Naira FGN bond of three tenors in the first of such monthly offerings in the new year. That's a bit of the stories making the headlines. But of course, the big story around Onohe's uh, uh, corruption, suspension, and replacement is a big story that we're taking to the market street this morning. Let's cross over to the Nigerian Stock Exchange where Temple Ashaju is standing by uh, our business correspondent there to uh, take us through this morning. Temple, good morning. It's good to see you. Last week was a very a big story for the market. We finished off very nicely, 1.36% on the equity side. Uh, but then we had the Onohes, uh, the CJN saga over the weekend coming to a new level uh, what are you hearing from the market street this morning as we reopen the doors? Good morning, Bosin. Uh, a lot of investors are concerned about this particular development, especially with the fact that in, lately we have seen the return of the offshore investors to the Nigerian markets and the equity side of the market, and of course the fixed income uh, where you have treasury bills and bonds market. The demand from these foreign investors in recent time have really risen, and we note that one, the moment that story went out last week, Friday, a lot of investors became concerned on the reactions that came from the uh, United Kingdom uh, embassy here here in Nigeria and of course uh, the United States of America and you also know the reaction that came from the European Union. These are countries that constitute part of the offshore investors that bring in money uh, by way of foreign exchange into the system because if you look at what we've been seeing on daily basis by way of transactions at the I and E windows lately, it really speaks volume and that's how we've been able to manage our foreign exchange pressures lately. Uh, so the, the Naira to the dollar has been uh, very, very stable in recent times given this uh, level of demands from these offshore investors. Now that these uh, concerns are coming from these three uh, key uh, foreign uh, uh, embassies and, uh, and envoys, we know that it really sends a, a kind of wrong signal to the market uh, because uh, a lot of traders here, investors, retail, institutional investors, they are all noting all of these developments as well. And you talked about the rally that we saw last week, up week on week, 1.36%. Some have even reported this same uh, weekly analysis, uh, weekly activities for last week as 1.41%. Now, it tells you that the rally was really there. And so if the market, now that the market has opened, we haven't really seen much difference, but uh, a lot of traders are concerned about this particular development. Don't forget again that this is coming on the, on the, on the heel of the uh, revenue strategy of the federal government, which was released before now. That has driven up some kind of traction in the markets because that's something that really spores a lot of investments from investors. We also saw the federal government, uh, President Mohammed Buhari, last week signing the executive order number seven, which is supposed to help show up uh, a lot of interest and investments in the infrastructure funding in this country. So these were really key uh, developments that aided um, some, the market market movement last week, Bosun. Yes, uh, Tempo, I'm sure we have quite a lot to talk about uh, on the program as we continue. But again, keep your uh, eyes open, your ears to the ground as always. 
would like to hear what the sentiments are and what's the talking point when stockbrokers start getting to the trading floor today. We're checking with you within the hour on the program. Temple Ashaju, our business correspondent, live to us from our studios at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Of course, 100 million US dollars was what uh, Tony Elimelu uh, promised he would deploy to entrepreneurship development in Africa. It's the first of such on the African continent. It was quite historic when it was announced. And now that program is in its fifth year. We've got a president or the head of the Tony Elimelu Foundation, uh, Paminda Vera, here in the studios this morning to take us through the fifth edition and, of course, how much of this $100 million uh, has been deployed. But more importantly is the impact that this uh, initiative has had on entrepreneurship across the continent and, in particular, here at home, where charity begins. Paminda, good morning. Good morning. Nice <laughs> it's, it's good to have you. Thank you thank, so much. Th thank you. It's, it's nice to discuss entrepreneurship at a very good time. And it's a, it's a story across the African continent, with every country you talk about. Absolutely. Entrepreneurship is what Africans are known about. So we want to do this. And when this $100 million initiative was, um, was announced, we're trying to track what has been achieved over the last couple of years. So what's been achieved yes. is that the program is in its fifth year. So it's not an initiative, it's a long-term investment from a private sector leader. I think that's really got to be emphasized, $100 million from a private sector leader who doesn't want to be remembered for the size of his bank account, but the legacy that he leaves behind. And the legacy that he's leaving behind is, it, you know, even in the last four years, we've empowered that's training, mentoring, funding, and membership to the largest entrepreneurship network across the African continent, 54 African economies, three languages, French, Portuguese, and English, and the Arab-speaking world are part of the program. 4,470 have been empowered um, with that, as well as seed capital funding, um, as well as you know, the building an infrastructure for the program, which is built to last. You're the CEO of this foundation, I am and I'm sure you listen to all the stories of those who are beneficiaries and those who have passed through uh, this very uh, great program. Uh, what have you been hearing, and how are you encouraged by what you're hearing in terms of what, what you see on sure, the ground? Yeah. So, you know, when we set out, we said we want, we expected our entrepreneurs the, that we provided training, mentoring, and funding mm. to create a million jobs. They're well on the way to doing that and exceeding it within the 10 years. We said we wanted those entrepreneurs to generate revenues, yeah? I.e. money, profits from their businesses, from their products and services. And we said that we expected those entrepreneurs to contribute at least $10 billion to the African economy within 10 years. We're well on our way to doing that. It's become, it's fundamentally clear that the, the economic transformation of Africa lies in the hands of African entrepreneurs. You said that, you know, entrepreneurship has always been in, in the African continent. Well, actually, yes, you know, it's in the African DNA to be entrepreneurial. But for entrepreneurs to thrive, you also need an amazing um, enabling environment, yeah? And I think one of the things that the foundation has done over the last five years of, its, of launching this program is to make entrepreneurship sexy and cool, right? And it's, it's, you know, the message being sent out is be job creators and not job seekers. Government can only do so much. And I think those are all the side effects of the impact of, of a program that was conceived really to say, we're going to empower 1,000 entrepreneurs every year. But the ripple effect across the continent and across the communities is, is I mean, you can't measure that in terms of returns on investment, both economic and social. If you look at shaping Africa, how does this all align with the vision of the founder, Tony Elumilu himself? Well, Tony Elumilu, Mr. Elumilu, is an entrepreneur. In the heart of it, he's an entrepreneur. You know, he runs, he's the chairman of um, UBA, he took a small bank, mm. and now is across 20 African countries, right? I'm um, employing 20,000 plus people, millions of customers. If that's not entrepreneurial, I don't know what is, right? Um, Hairs holding group of companies, yeah? Both of those institutions are very important for the philanthropic organization called the Tony Elimilu Foundation. So I think entrepreneurship is in his DNA, right? Building long-term sustainable organizations and institutions is in his DNA. I think the other big thing about him is that he sees himself 
Yes, he was made in Nigeria, and he's made it in Nigeria, but he sees African, the African continent as his, um, as his market, yeah? And I think one of the, th and, you know, and we, we all know his economic philosophy of African capitalism, that it is the private sector that's going to really develop Africa and lead in the development of Africa, obviously working hand in hand with the government. So I think all of those elements contribute to his philanthropic vision, which is being realized through the foundation, but at the heart of it is entrepreneurship. You, you work with Tony on a daily basis. So, I do so, so, I, so I'm sure you, you, you can read his mind and all of that and say, hey, uh, what's going on in Tony Elimelu's mind when he's so passionate about Africa, uh, African entrepreneurship? What do you think is the driving force behind the founder of this foundation? I think he has, you know, he's a student of history. Um, he's very aware of what um, an Africa dependent on aid, an Africa dependent on handouts, an Africa dependent on the outside world to give it a hand up. His philosophy is that we have to give ourselves the hand up. Yeah? Why? I mean, you know, Africa is rich in natural resources. Why is it that Africans, it's Africans who should benefit from those natural resources. Africa is rich in human capital. You know, 60, like 70, 80 percent of the young population of the world, it resides in Africa. Who do you think is going to drive the economies of the world? It is the Afri young people from Africa, the young demographic, as well as the young demographic from a country, my own country, uh, India. Yeah, and so he believes that if we, what we must do is to harness that potential and begin to invest in it. Um, what I what I'm amazed by is he never sits still. He never says, wow, you know, you'd think 10-year commitment, now we should just grow steadily. But in October last year, we launched TEF Connect, yeah? As if launching Africa's largest entrepreneurship program wasn't big enough, right? Committing $100 million. And the thinking behind it was, but hang on, we're only selecting 1,000 from the 300,000 plus that come to our portal and apply. How can I institutionalize luck? How can I democratize that opportunity? So the idea of building an open source platform. So a lot of the knowledge and information that we've accumulated over the last five years is now available on TEF Connect, www.tefconnect.com. Um, you know, and, and so that those who don't get through to the program can actually avail themselves of the 12 week training program of mentoring, of access to information and other resources. So it's about opening it up and enabling more and more people to be able to take benefit from what the foundation is doing. So what? sorry, I'm I, equally I as passionate. No, 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 it's okay. I know, I know. I, I can read that all over you. But, but again, what makes this initiative or this program unique? Is it the collaborations? Is it the partnership? I'm sure it's more beyond the money. Absolutely. I think it's the vision. I think to start with, he could have launched a program just for Nigerians or for, you know, South Nigeria. But I think his vision, the vision was always big. It was Pan-Africa. Um, and long-term investment and commitment. So most people would say, you know, most philanthropists would say, I'd like to make a commitment for one year of X million dollars for an initiative and see how the pilot worked. But from the day one, it was a 10-year commitment. You can achieve a lot in 10 years. You can see results in 10 years. You can see visible evidence of the impact that you're making, yeah? Um, and then I think the other is that let's create a program, a structure, and it is, it is called, you know, seven pillars of the Tony Lumalu Foundation Entrepreneurship Program. Let's structure it, let's design and build something that's made in Africa by an African for Africans. So the content, the 12-week training program, is very much designed based on the conditions under which African startups have to operate, which are very different if you're in Silicon Valley or if you're in the UK. Um, the mentoring, you know, mentoring is, is again in the DNA of, of Africans, yeah? Because who do you go to? You go to family, fools, and friends for your first support, yeah? But how do we institutionalize and those processes? And, yeah, the, you know, and mentoring and make 
And, and really, and so we have now the largest database of mentors. And over, five, over the five years or four years, we've had mentors from around the world. And you know what's amazing is that they've learned as much from the entrepreneur as the entrepreneurs have learned from them in terms of as guides. I think the other big thing we did was to then bring the entire African continent, the entrepreneurs, in what we started off as a boot camp and has now become the largest entrepreneurship gathering on the continent, the TEF Forum, mm. the TEF Connect. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us about collaborations and partnerships. I'm sure you've had some. We can, but certainly I think, you know, I talked about TEF Connect, about opening up um, the entrepreneurship program to, you know, to the rest of the world, but opening up the African, what was happening, what is happening on the African continent in the entrepreneurship space, connecting entrepreneurs with the entrepreneurship ecosystem. But the key thing for us in 2018 was really, and we began the discussion in 2017, was to reach out to other organizations and form partnerships who, who believe in our, the program that we've structured and actually want to support and can support additional entrepreneurs. So I said 4,470, 470 of those have been supported by our partners, GIZ, UNDP, the International Red Cross, and a, and a number of private sector um, individuals as well. So they are coming in and saying, we will do our 1,000, but we know that there are every year about 10,000 who could easily qualify. And what you've done is to build the infrastructure, the program infrastructure. Mm -hmm. What we will bring is the seed capital that um, the, the entrepreneurs who are selected will be able to receive. Is that part of your half year, second term of the 10 year period <laughs> from Minta? What, what do you, I don't know. I mean, what do you mean? Is that my. Well, it's, it is a 10 year program. Yeah. Yes, now you're at five years. So I'm talking about the next five. So the next five is to continue to obviously fulfill our commitment mm. of empowering 1,000 every year, mm. to bring on board more and more partners who can support additional entrepreneurs, mm. to really build the TEF Connect, the platform as the destination for entrepreneurs and the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Um, to really celebrate, um, by, by that I mean to track the amazing successes of the entrepreneurs who've gone through the program. Mm. Celebrate the successes as well as those who've had to pivot because they came into the program with a business idea to do one thing and the market opportunity no longer exists and they're pivoting to something new. Uh, the current uh, program is ongoing. It is indeed. Yes. So, um, to every, to all your listeners and the audience watching this, um, the application portal open on the 1st of January. Um, you can apply from the 1st of January to the 1st of March. Go to www.tefconnect.com, which is the app where the application is. But before you embark on that application, go to our website www.tonyalimulufoundation.org because if you want to be an intelligent applicant, yeah, and you're not just chasing the $5,000 because you're a grant winner, you really should inform yourself because there's four years of a legacy that's been built. There are testimonials, there are audio stories, there are documentaries, there are frequently answered questions, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you should really do your homework for yourself. because the application form is not a walk in the park. And on the 1st of March, the application portal will close, and we, we begin the selection process. Well, when, is the, when is Bootcamp? So the next forum, as it's now called, mm -hmm. the TEF, the Tony Nimulu Foundation Entrepreneurship Forum, um, is scheduled for July this year. I'll try to make it. No, you have to make it. <laughs> and you okay. have to come no. and mentor now, this is my the, commitment. the entrepreneurs. You make me to commit. Absolutely. Absolutely. On air. <laughs> to all our viewers here and around the world, uh, Praminda Vera, who is the CEO of uh, Tony Elumulu uh, Foundation. We're right back after the break. We're talking about the Economic News Box.